Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this simple but quite effective text effect. So let's have a look at how it's done. So first of all, project setup. I've uh, chosen an aspect ratio of 1080 by 1350, which is obviously social media 4x5, frame rate of 25 frames a second and a duration of 4 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is grab the text tool and type the word squishy. And what I want to do with squishy is I want to right align it like that. So what I'm actually going to do here is set its X position to 540 and its Y position to zero. And then I can come back to the text and just adjust its size till where so sort of the full width of the frame like that. Then I'm going to take Squishy and right click Duplicate. Let's just turn off Squishy while we edit this new text. And here I'm going to type Squashy. Now, what we want to do with Squashy is we want to left align him. And we also want to come over here and set its exposition to negative 540. And then we can come back into the text. Now I don't want to adjust the size because in doing so, it's going to make it less tall than my Squishy. So what I can do is I can come into the scale here and use the X scale just to scale it till it fits within the frame like that. So then let's turn Squishy back on again. So now what we need to do is select them both, come over to the X position and set that to zero for both of them. And now you can see that one butts up against the other and in the center of the frame. So let's just quickly give, give these some color, this for Squishy, and this nice purple for Squashy. So then what I want to do is I want to link the scale of Squashy to the scale of Squishy. So I'm going to come to Properties, open up the scale, and it's only the X scale I'm interested in. So right click, Add Parameter Behavior Link, and let's set, select Squishy as the source. So we want this to be an inverse uh, relationship. So we're going to have to type negative one for the scale, but now you'll notice that Squashy is back to front. And to fix that, we need to change the X offset to be negative 100. So now if you come back into the scale for Squishy, you'll see that as we adjust that, uh, Squashy gets bigger or smaller, depending on, on the scale of Squishy. So let's set Squishy to 100%. So what I'm then going to do is I'm going to add this scale value to a rig. So add to rig create new rig, add to new slider. And what I also want to do is to add the X position of this enclosing group to that same slider. So right click on the X position, add to rig, add to slider. So if we take a look at these slider values, so when squishy scale is at 100%, we want the X position of the group to be 540. So then if we select the tab at the opposite end of the slider, this one here, we want the opposite to be true. So the group X position is going to be negative 540 and that squishy X value is going to be zero. And now if we move that slider, you'll see how we've got our, our effect. So now what we can do is we can keyframe this slider to create our animation. So parked on the first frame, let's hit a keyframe then let's come to frame 50, uh, which is obviously halfway through our animation. And let's set this value to be 100. Or you could move the slider if you prefer, but I kind of prefer tapping the numbers because you, you can often sort of dislodge the position of these little dots here. And let's come to the end and let's set that value back down to zero. And now if you play from the start, you'll see that we've got our animation as follows. Now it's a little bit dull and linear. So what we can do is come to that slider and show in keyframe editor. And then we can select all of the keyframes by drawing around them, right click and ease both. And you'll see that we've now got a nice smooth animation path and it's much more of a kind of organic squish and squash. So now what we need to do is to replicate this. Now, what we cannot do is we can't use this group. We have to put this group inside a new group. So object new group, drag that group inside it. And then we can't actually use the group. 
we have to use a clone of the group. So right click, make clone layer. And then we can turn off that group and close it down, in fact. And then what we can do is come to object and replicate. So we're replicating that clone. Now, rectangle tile fill is fine. And we only want one column. And then we just want to scale up the size. And you can do this by eye, but I know that the number I want in this case is 1200. So I'm just going to type that in. And I also want to set that Y position to negative 60. Quite how it's going to be is really going to depend on the font that you use. So we can come back to the replicator and we can increase the number of rows. Uh, 10 is too much. Let's go for nine because we need to see the tail of the cues. So now we've got that, which is not really what we want because we wanted them to happen sequentially. So the reason we made a clone is that we were we can now access these play controls for the, the source. And what we're going to do is we're going to add a source frame offset of, I don't know, four or something. And now if you press play, you'll see that we've got this nice sequential result. Now you'll notice the animation is being driven from the center. And that's because the origin of the replicator is set to center. Whereas if, for example, we were to set it to top, then the origin will be the top. And you'll see how that works. Or conversely, we could select bottom and it'll behave in the opposite fashion. So starting from the bottom up to the top. So that is pretty much the effect. The only thing we need to do is add a nice background. So let's come to generators, color solid. Let's drag that in behind everything else. And let's just pick a nice color for it. So I'm going to go with this crazy orange, which I think actually works well with these, these different colors. So that's looking quite nice. So what if we wanted to change the text? Let's come back into the group. So let's take the word squishy, come to format, and I'm going to type words. And then I'm going to come to squashy, and I'm going to type matter. Now you'll notice that the difference is here is that the scale of them is not quite right. So what we can do is come back into this scale factor for the text. So because I want to edit the word matter, I'd better come to frame 50. And we just need to adjust that X value until matter films the frame. Come back to words. Let's come to the first frame. And then we just need to, again, come into the scale. And we had it 100%, but that's not enough to, for words to fill the screen. So just increase that scale like that until words fill the screen. And now we've got a different message. So if you were publishing this as a template for Final Cut, you'd obviously need to publish these two scale factors. And doubtless, you'd also want to publish the number of rows here and probably quite a bit else besides that I'm not going to go into here. I just finally want to point out that another thing I did do was to bring in this glass texture. Uh, let's just scale it till it fits like that and then set its opacity down to something like 5%. And it gives this kind of nice effect of this actually being on a screen, as you can see. Pump it up to 10 so you can see more clearly, but I, I, th I think that's quite a nice little detail. Now, as I say, you could very easily publish this as a template for Final Cut, but given that it's also a seamless loop, it might be quite nice to just use this as a GIF somewhere. So another potential use case for it. So anyway, I hope that was interesting. Thanks very much for watching. See you again soon.